if the hemoglobin is the barest minimum at least minimum required is about 10.5 if it is lower than that it is called anemia and unfortunately most of our indian women are prone to be anemic come from uh, the most ancient civilization in the world called as india or bharat so today i'm going to talk about the women's health from natural health perspective because my domain expertise is in natural medicine i would like to take you along a journey about women so here i would like to quote a small quotation from manasmriti and vedas yatra naryastu poojyante ramante tatra devata where women are honored there the gods are pleased i think it's an understatement because women are so very important so special that's what i was saying because women are so special and so are their needs and health aspects so woman is been regarded as a mother the divine mother even if you see it nature nature is called prakriti prakriti is the mother purusha is the male force or you know uh, almighty whatever you call so even in most ancient energy medicine acupuncture and so on so forth they have also said yin and yang are very important in your body yin represents again female force yang represents the male force so the male and female female forces in unison and in equilibrium is health i was just curiously looking at the computers which is like you know most important part of our uh, life and today i'm i'm able to reach out to all of you through this wonderful media of information technology and it even i don't know whether you have uh, thrown some light on there is a component called the motherboard why not the fatherboard so that's so very important about mother so i am not undermining the importance of father but you know the mothers are so very important the woman as a mother and her journey right from a baby till you know we call in medical parlance the care of womb to tomb that's what preventive medicine says so naturopathic medicine is all about prevention then preservation of health and curing the disease and all so with that aspect i would like to take you through a journey of women's health perhaps one session may not be sufficient as we are discussing with the uh, you know the founders and the creators of this platform maybe if required i would have to do few more sessions to cover through the entire uh, gamut of problems and other things so it's a journey of women from puberty till menopause you might ask only till menopause no beyond of course before puberty till menopause and beyond so there are various kinds of health issues women might face you imagine a young girl when she is like you know in the age of adolescence as she is gradually turning into adult what we call the age of puberty what kind of an anxiety that young girl would go through i'm sure all of you would have seen looking at your daughters or your sisters or your cousins or one of the family members there is an unexplained anxiety because these days so much of uh, information is available which is so great but at the same time it also comes with a price tag that you know there is so much of misinformation or disinformation as well so this young girl has to go through so much of information hit the information highway is opened up and she knows left right center all of our ott platforms are so very active she has to go through the netflixes and so on so forth and her colleagues her friends the peers are talking about the you know the stage called puberty or menarche what we call in medical language so there are so many changes happening in the body so this young girl 
is experiencing quite a lot of anxiety which is very natural so she has to go through these premenstrual blues the first period when it starts what is called as menarche or puberty so it comes with a baggage of so much of change physically mentally and emotionally as well so then comes medically when you look at the problems and what are the commonest problems that women face or young girls face at that age is anemia that is lack of blood lack of proper hemoglobin and iron in the blood leads to a condition called anemia as per the who the world health organization standards globally anemia is one of the very predominant preventable problem which contributes to women's health not only at the young age even till very elderly age as well so what is the characteristic feature of anemia if you look at all of us know we have our hemoglobin which is the red part of our blood the red blood corpuscles in our body they bind to heme the iron and that runs through your body as hemoglobin which is very important for energy transfer or oxygen transfer to various parts of the body if the hemoglobin is the barest minimum at least minimum required is about 10.5 if it is lower than that it is called anemia and unfortunately most of the indian women are prone to be anemic for various causes and reasons we'll examine them so you might ask me so you have shown us a picture that most of the women are anemic then what are the solutions inculcate a positive lifestyle change incorporating natural medical solutions right from an young age i would elaborate a bit on that green leafy vegetables should become part of the diet which are so very easily available especially in india and we live in south india right now so southern india even that part of that matter of fact north india has got lot of green leafy vegetables which are available across various seasons incorporate the green leafy vegetables you have to encourage the young girls to make it a habit to eat and drink the juices and consume them on a day to day basis for instance inclusion of carrot beetroot celery which is so easily available spinach amaranthus and eating fruits of various array and colors the standard nutrition advocates that one should have at least five servings of fruit which could be anything locally available seasonally available they need not be very expensive fruits or the fruits which are cold stored throughout the year like apples or anything like that but whatever is locally available even something like guavas what are called perus and all that jamka in telugu it's a abundant source of nutrition vitamin c so that can be included in the diet cherries are good grapes both the black grapes and uh, white grapes are good the dried fruits like raisins picks and dates dates are very good source of iron and also will help to improve the hemoglobin so dates can be consumed as in a fleshy form or they can be soaked overnight which are called the dry dates or chuhara in hindi these can be soaked overnight about 3 uh, to 4 in a cup of water after washing them thoroughly in the morning you can drink that water and eat them so they would help you raisins specially can be soaked about 8 to 10 the fix or the anjeer they can be taken about one or two all of these better soak them overnight after washing them and drink the water and eat them if you do it regularly for 2 to 3 months you can i i bet you can get your hemoglobin checked before and after 3 months again you recheck you will you are going to improve your hemoglobin which we see on a day to day clinical practice at even pema wellness so at pema wellness we represent the pema preserve which is a great organization you know globally we are trying to promote wellness and health in a natural way in a big way we are trying to do it and to are trying to reach out to people so that more and more people are improved total wellness we are not just looking at the health the health cannot be i know established only at one level at physical level but it has to be physical mental social and also spiritual all the four planes so for that we are trying and super foods are very important uh, i know whether you are aware or not so down south especially in uh, tamil nadu i have come across uh, 
most of the common ladies who are even working in fields they make it a point to consume drumstick or moringa which is their part of their day to day life they definitely eat moringa either it in the form of curry or in the dals or in sambar the drumstick sambar is very popular i believe and you know moringa is held as a super food and in africa most of the women are getting empowered by cultivating moringa they are cultivating moringa the drumstick on a huge scale and they are air drying and you know they are doing it proper processing and even exporting which is empowering women even economically then commonly available wheat grass how do you get wheat grass take about 6 to 7 plastic bowls put some mud in that soak wheat in them and uh, try and regularly water and the grass grows to about certain uh, heights about 3 to 4 inches grass comes up you can plant the wheat in seven different bowls so that each day of the week you have got uh, one bunch of wheat grass available for you in your kitchen or in your balcony in, in your apartment you can do it so cut that wheat grass and uh, wash it properly and put it in a mixi or blender and uh, remove that wheat grass extract it about a small shot of wheat grass every day is very good to improve your hemoglobin it's very popular in the west i'm sure who traveled and all will see it's been sold popularly in whole foods and all at a premium you know in india you get it everywhere curry leaves which is like you know very common part of indian cuisine it's very useful uh, supplement natural supplement to improve the hemoglobin as well as iron make it a point to intake of curds and brewers yeast there is i don't know whether uh, you are aware there is a practice uh, in most of the rural india especially uh, as we come from andhra pradesh and uh, telangana there is there is a practice that most of the you know the uh, people who are working in the farms and uh, daily laborers what they would do is they take the curd you know the curd rice especially they soak it in water and keep it overnight this is called as tarwani this tarwani is consumed by the hard working laborers in the morning along with maybe a dash of uh, green chili the uh, onion so that is their staple uh, breakfast most of the people it's very good in natural yeast and natural gut microbiome improves by this and in naturopathy we include cold water treatments which are very good to stimulate your erythropoietic system to improve the formation of rbc and to improve the longevity of the hemoglobin and the rbc in your body for that cold tub baths are very much helpful uh, you know we do suggest hip baths or sitz bath which is nothing but take a small plastic tub wherein generally many people soak the clothes for washing that kind of a tub is fair enough if you don't have an access to any nature cure center close by to you even you can buy a traditional tub bath and keep it in your home and do it regularly it's like a panacea for many of the problems including anemia and common Uh, health issues being faced by women this is to name a few there are so much of uh, natural solutions available out there which you can regularly do for anemia i would suggest a uh, one take home juice this is called abc juice what we call apple beet carrot take them in equal quantities and extract together a nice concoction or a juice a fresh juice this should be extracted fresh and consumed fresh please don't extract it and keep it in the freezer or fridge and consume two three days no then that uh, nutritive value won't be there but extract them freshly and apple beet carrot juice the abc juice you can extract the juice and drink it afresh first thing in the morning preferably an empty stomach the absorption will be really good your gut microbiome will act properly on it your intestines would absorb this readily available nutrition because carrot contains the beta carotenes especially the carotenoids the flavonoids would be there carrot beetroot and apple all these three in a good combination would help to improve hemoglobin also this is an anti cancerous formulation so do include this in your day to day life then comes malnutrition which is very common malnutrition includes underweight or overweight unfortunately india is still a very much developing country we have poverty and ignorance and you know 
it is these are all part of our lifestyle here with the poverty comes most of the people who are asthenic or you know underweight to children are common what is underweight and what is overweight if you look at the criteria as per the nutrition we have something a basic marker called bmi body mass index body mass index is an indicator which indicates about your nutrition and health status the normal bmi should be for anyone in between 18.5 to 24 or 24.5 maximum of kg per meter square how you arrive at bmi or body mass index take your weight in kilograms divided by your height in meter square you come at a figure or arrive at a you know denominator that is called bmi if you are at bmi is below 18 you are called underweight if you are more than 25 and more you are called overweight and 25 to 29 generally is considered as overweight 29 and above is considered as obesity this i am talking global standards but when it comes to we the special people indians the overweight criteria starts right from 24 above because most of the indian people have got lot of central obesity or pot belly we most of the body is very thin there is not much of muscle but the fat which comes and sits on your stomach which is more dangerous so overweight is like an open visa i would say for many of the problems to be invited underweight again comes with a host of many problems which the underweight child or underweight woman can be prone for especially the infections in india tuberculosis is very common you will be very surprised to see and quite a affluent people and very well educated people coming up with a tuberculosis infection it's nothing wrong in it because we are living in such a kind of uh, surroundings we have beautiful homes and right next to your home you might find litter of garbage well it's again a social call so when there is lot of uh, filth around or there is lot of garbage around you are prone for many kind of diseases especially the infectious diseases could be like tuberculosis or malaria or dengue fever things like that so people who are underweight they are generally prone for all kind of infections because your body is not in a position to fight with the infection the immunity is very low so people who are underweight should take special care in eating a balanced diet optimal nutrition is very important what is optimal nutrition including enough quantities of protein carbohydrates and fats and micronutrients is very important in shaping the health all of us know your carbohydrates comes from the staple diet like the rice you eat or the wheat or any form of that this is the major part of your diet which gives us energy then comes the protein which are the building blocks of your body a natural rda says that every person the recommended daily allowance as per the nutrition is everyone should consume at least 1 gram of protein as per their body weight for instance if you are of 50 kilos of weight you should consume 50 grams of protein every day in various forms then comes the fat which is very important many people shun the fat thinking that fat is really dangerous but it is not especially women i would want to advise many people would like to go for that pencil thin figure that may be you know good to look at in a fashion show but not in real life because it comes with a lot of health problems fat especially for women is very important why i am saying women because fat most of our vitamins in our body and minerals work on the you know in the fat media we have got fat soluble vitamins vitamin a d e k they require the fat we have water soluble vitamins vitamin b12 and b and b complex so the fat soluble vitamins to work you need to have some amount of adiposity or fat deposit then only all your hormones especially your female hormones which is very important your estrogen progesterone everything to work and testosterone all these hormones require some amount of fat so consuming a balanced diet especially for people who are overweight and obese avoiding all the oily foods and junk foods i need not name what is junk already in the in the prelude we have discussed at the click of a mouse or click of your phone you have got swiggy and zomatos available for you they may be great apps and uh, you know great facilitators 
in times of emergency i would appreciate but don't make it a habit to order and you know if you start ordering without your knowledge you will order you will reach out for a pizza rather than reaching out for a glass of fresh juice or fruit so these habits one has to inculcate right from the school i am sure most of the schools are working towards this and in this from the school age children should be encouraged to know about the importance of natural healthy traditional food that is available traditional food habits are the best for anyone if you want to enjoy your health so avoiding all these junk is very important and comes to the moment these days most of the people are only moving their fingers or maybe the mind not the whole body isn't it very unfortunate situation we have evolved from hunter gatherers to what we are today that is the evolution of human being the homo sapiens homo sapiens has evolved as a nomad who was gathering he was roaming around different places as we call banjaras in you know our indian parlance our human being was a banjara who was roaming from place to place as nomads who doesn't know anything they have gathered here the food and ate it then went to the next place and ate it then we were moving so much then came the farming then that kind of put in breaks to our movement and then people started settling down colonizing and you know settling down mostly at the river front there they have built houses and started doing the farming which is good so that you have staple food but at the cost of lack of physical exercise so make it a point to adopt movement into your lifestyle every half an hour to one hour even if you are a desk worker you are an executive whatever if you have to take meetings please don't mind don't hesitate to you stand and speak or you know you can let your colleagues be in the same room or you can you have you can promote uh, you know standing meetings or you know impromptu meetings of 10 15 minutes rather than sitting at a uh, chair or sitting at a board and you know just listening to people so physical exercise is very very important because it is the say the saying is that sitting is next to very dangerous habit then incorporate into your lifestyle our ancient most important tradition of india yoga india has given yoga to the world recently we have celebrated on the june 21st the international yoga day so the epitome of yoga is unison or you know the the word yoga indicates unison the unity of the individual soul with the ultimate soul at the spiritual level at a physiological level equanimity or balance is very important in everything to bring in that equilibrium yoga helps simple breathing is very important when or you are stressed or you are just sitting because anxiety is part of all these problems all you need to do is drink a glass of water and do take few deep breaths i give a mantra 20 deep breaths just stand just stop what are you are doing take a little break wherever you are sitting if required loosen yourself close your eyes just be aware of your breathing take few deep breaths and leave the breath as much as so this will bring in a positive change bring more oxygen into your tissues gives direct oxygen to the brain which will help most importantly being aware of your plate what we say and preach here in pema portion control see portion control is very important what happens generally you might be eating a good food or right food if you are not eating right food in right quantities that is again not correct you know portion control is very very important if required you can keep a big plate but serve small so in the big plate it looks nice when or specially you are going for a buffet make it very important you may be very watchful you make a buddy group if required the other person will watch you you will watch the other person i am not going to indulge you are also not indulging see what i am saying is that most of the time we are doing good we are eating right food but you are not educative or am aware of how much portion is consumed because portion control has to be inculcated has to be practiced then you can bring it as a habit for that very important tip is chew properly chewing at least each morsel what you have taken 32 times why 32 because you have 32 teeth isn't it the teeth has to grind the food the moment you have eaten something you have taken that bite take your time properly you know chew it so it become liquid by the time it has reached into your gut 
because we don't have teeth in the gut the teeth god has given or the nature has given for you to grind the food whatever you are eating so it becomes easier for digestion then your stomach also will bless you because your gut is your second brain as we say so most important portion control include proper chewing habits sit at a comfortable leisure place at your leisure you eat being aware of what you are eating don't in, don't sit in front of computer sit in front of tv or have your handheld device the phone and don't scroll through the whatsapp and eat it is not good. this is a commonest problem with many of us so we have to change from today.